I'm glad to introduce our first uh, seminar speaker, Dr. Li Zhang, Associate Professor from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering from Mississippi State University. And uh, Dr. Zhang's uh, research areas including connected vehicles, intelligent transportation systems, and uh, subject signal control, so which are very closely related to my research area. Actually, we knew each other a very long time because the Dr. Zhang used to teach in the university where I was an uh, undergraduate student. So, and uh, recently, Dr. Zhang is working on the uh, next generation of uh, traffic simulator with uh, advanced computing technologies such as uh, cloud computing, parallel computing, mobile computing, distributed computing, different computing technologies to enhance the uh, traffic uh, simulator. So, uh, please join me to welcome Dr. Zhang for his talk. Basically, uh, uh, I'm trying to summarize the, uh, what the research projects that I have done in recent two years. Uh, most of the research project uh, is funded by U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, there are a connection of the project. Uh, those are uh, all of those projects uh, are funded by uh, U.S. DOD. And a few of them are by state. The first one, the framework, uh, uh, basically, for any research you want to have a kind of environment. Uh, when we do the connected vehicle, we make the research and we don't have any framework. So the first part of the work is done, trying to establish a research framework or establish a kind of uh, computational uh, platform. So you can do it, your experiments, you can implement your greatest ideas on top of those frameworks. Uh, so that's a basically the first part is a kind of basic research. And that one was funded by US DOD, uh, small business, uh, small business innovative research program. The, the funding level is a kind of a little bit over two million dollars. They uh, also state of uh, Kentucky also provide a half million dollars of the matching funds for that fund. The second one, the third one, is a kind of uh, last year I spent one year at the US DOD to uh, do my synthetic research. So the second part and the third part was funded by US DOD to sponsor my uh, to sponsor my synthetic research and uh, I spent the whole year the US DOT. Uh, that money has not, have not, that task has not been finished yet. So especially the second part of the uh, project was still published. Was still uh, work on that. Uh, the third, the fourth one is a recent project we just finished with the uh, US DOT, which was the primary uh, Sources from uh, US DOD, but we got a subcontract from NATO for it. That one is a small project, big turning around project, and uh, we are hoping to expand that project in the next three years. And we are excited to see how that project can be. Other project, like the integrated corridor management, that is the uh, uh, Mississippi State DOD project, and we did some. Um, the bike modeling, I'm just trying to show how in my class the graduate student will be able to research with, with the small research on the bike, bike model. And uh, uh, that first project is a uh, 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 UTC project. Uh, I know uh, we have a uh, uh, world first class earthquake research facility in the most Buffalo. So, I just spoke to a structural professor this morning, and basically in that part, we have some similarities and uh, have some connections with what the work that you so far the environment is done. And if we have the time, then we can talk about the uh, advanced computing and track simulation. Uh, that is uh, the part of the first part of the research. Uh, I think we have a small audience, so please feel free to, if you have uh, any questions in the middle. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. 
tell you what I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to start with the first part of the um, uh, first part of the research, which is uh, the framework of the uh, spec. Basically, what that spec is a uh, signal facing and the timing, which is the acronym for uh, one of the uh, US DOT's uh, uh, reach, uh, we, it's probably, uh, it's not kind of it's kind of uh, uh, it's kind of uh, the uh, initiative. Basically, that what that program does is that uh, in the future, in the connected vehicle environment, uh, there are two-way communications between the vehicle and the infrastructure. By the way, in the bigger picture for the connected vehicle research, usually that's divided by two blocks. And one front is vehicle to vehicle communications, another front is vehicle to infrastructure. So my work is limited to the vehicle to infrastructure research. For the vehicle to infrastructure research, there is a USDOT initiator called the uh, SPARC, which is basically uh, when a connected vehicle approach at an intersection, then it receives the information from the character signal control systems, and the timing plan and the facing how many seconds of green time has lived. So that's a, that's a part of the spec. On the other hand, uh, they also receive the connected vehicle information from the cars. Every car with a, com a communication equipment is going to send that information to the spec. And in that spec system, they have several functions defined by USDOT. So my work is just a small part of that. And we take the information which is already in the spec system. Then we use that information to uh, develop the traffic signal uh, timing plan and to adjust the traffic signal timing plan in real time. And then it goes back to the traffic signal controller and the spec system monitors the traffic signal control system, sends back to the vehicle with the information that I have talked about, like a fitting time, how many green seconds we have left. So on the vehicle to vehicle research side, they got that information for the car manufacturers. Then they can do something. They can either uh, to force you to stop if the car manufacturer has a program, knows about you all have to run the red light. You have to commit with the cars in front of you. So basically, USDOT works not over there. We just send out the information. And the USDOT does not care about what other manufacturers do. So for the spec system, uh -huh. uh, and uh, how it works with actually the signal control. So basically, you don't know how many seconds left, right? So how, in this case, how, do you still receive how many seconds estimated I mean, for green time? Or you don't receive it? Just say uh, it's green right now. And there can be a range. Give a range. Okay, give uh, a range. Okay. There can be a range. But I think the USDOT can do a better work. Yeah. Uh, we can forecast. We okay. can run an actuated controller logic by ourselves. Because okay. for the manufacturers, we don't know what their logic is. However, we know how the actuated controller logic works. So we can have a simulated. That was something that I have talked to USDOT. We can better work. Then I'll get the range. Yeah. We can do much better work to get them in range. The last problem is something we can do positively. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good question because uh, uh, that, that's a question they have. So that's, that's basically that part of the work is sponsored by this DOD to my financial research. And then the framework, the framework that we are building is uh, uh, we build a track simulator first. And that tractor simulator is based on the uh, USDOT's test track simulator. Uh, we build that as an open source. And we have the track simulator. Then we connect that track simulator to the uh, controller. And we we'll also connect it to the part of the communication equipment, the roadway, roadside equipment, and onboard systems. And this part of the work is still under the uh, under the development. We have not finished the that completely. However, for all those systems, it's going to be like the real world system to connect to the spec system. And we have also have the controller 
all can become connected to the SPAC system because the, in the real world, the SPAC system is going to become connected to the controller. And uh, for the software part, we have furnished the, the, that one. Uh, the, the one that over here is called the PCA, it's called the trajectory converter and nanonizer, which is basically provided the uh, connected information uh, to the cars or to the, uh, to the uh, roadway system, the uh, software part we have, we have done that part. So uh, the, the specific research that I'm doing is that based on the software part. We have not built the hardware part because we're still working on that part. So basically, we, uh, we, like I mentioned, we don't have a connected vehicle in the past, so we have built the entire framework first before we can do the uh, research. And then once we have that uh, uh, connected vehicle information, then we can do the simulated connected vehicle information to do the future research. And this is the part of uh, about that I'm talking about the, uh, the details about how we interface with the uh, connected vehicle information generator, which was uh, uh, developed by uh, another company which called it uh, it's called the uh, 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 Lovelace. So they built the connected vehicle, uh, uh, which basically they convert the uh, information from simulation to the connected vehicle information. That information basically is exactly as the G27 certified information. Basically, connected information, what are we talking about? The connected big information, which we basically, that is a basic safety message, which was defined by uh, J2537, which is uh, uh, SAE Society of Mobile Engineers uh, Standards. So basically, the simulation right now, we can generate the exact information about the connected big information that we can get and receive it from the real world. So that's the first part of the work. And uh, like I said, we also have the hardware in the loop simulation. And uh, we use uh, our simulation coming to the uh, NDCIP uh, library. And we can control the hardware, <coughs> computer hardware. And uh, we have done another project. I have tested the entire framework. And uh, it's uh, working very well. Uh, basically, that's uh, uh, that's the first part of the uh, work that we have done. So once we finish, well, we have uh, finished the simulate part of the uh, first part of the framework. We can do the spec application design. <coughs> For the spec uh, application, we have uh, two. <coughs> we have we have two objectives to achieve. The first one is the mobility, the second one is the safety objective. For the mobility objectives, we have tried two things. One is uh, team management and the coordination. The second one is the coordination strategy. And for the safety strategy, we try the DCS, which DCS means decision and the control system. And basically what that decision and the control system means is that if you are transportation, how many are you have? Are the transportation engineer uh, students or faculty? Okay, excellent. So you know of the dilemma, right? Basically, when we drive close to the intersection, and we say, <coughs> when you are approaching an intersection, when you see the yellow light appear, you probably it's very hard for you to make a decision to stop or not to stop at some distance from your safety. So basically, the decision control system will extend the green time if you are in that image zone. Have difficult trying to stop cars. And uh, uh, that can protect you to commit with other vehicles. So we have uh, using the uh, in the framework to develop and did another approach. 
Uh, one more thing, if you, uh, just in case somebody is not familiar with the traffic signal control system, and uh, the very state of practice is when, uh, for the traffic signal operations, and uh, for a couple of years, you need to fine tune the traffic signal timing plan. How you do that traffic signal timing plan is that uh, you send out the either students or equipment to do the traffic accounts. You got the traffic accounts back, then you use the synchrome or other offline traffic simulation software, and you optimize the traffic signal timing plan, then you do that and then uh, send the traffic signal timing plan back to the controllers. So that's a state of practice. That's why we use the national wide, even international wide. A better approach is to install the adaptive traffic signal system. And that system can monitor the traffic in real time and according to the information that you got from the traffic detection system, then you forecast the traffic. And when you forecast the traffic in next minute or next two minutes or next five minutes, then according to the traffic that the forecast then you reallocate the traffic signal timing plan, or you adjust the offset or adjust the cyclement. That's a that's the best traffic control system that we can get. So if you want to develop a traffic control system for the control for the connected vehicles, you will have to establish the baseline. The baseline have to be to be the least of the stand-up practice. Your control vehicle algorithm will be at least fit up to get a better performance. And preferably, you can be the existing effects of that control system. So uh, that's just something that I, uh, I just uh, like to, uh, uh, to uh, mention in front. Uh, if you want to do the connected vehicle research, you have to establish the baseline and you have to establish the home This is the one thing that we have for, uh, we have for uh, tried using that spec architecture. Uh, basically, uh, the, uh, most of the uh, traffic engineers at the traffic research nowadays are uh, thinking about the traffic control strategy, you have to and uh, need to have two types of the traffic signal control strategy. One is the traffic signal control strategy, which can deal with oversaturated conditions. Basically, what an oversaturated condition means is uh, you have more cars than your road can accommodate, and that's oversaturated conditions. Basically, in that oversaturated conditions, and you track the signal control algorithm have to respond to that type of like condition. Uh, basically, uh, the queue management so far are considered to be the best approach to address the oversaturated condition. So what we have here is that we have uh, you trying to use this back system and trying to think about uh, how to control that type of situation. We come up with two strategies. The first strategy is uh, basically it's very intuitive in the way that first one is just distribute as much wind pack to the higher thematic capacity approach. We have the theoretical pool about that. Then the second one is that if we allocate green time to balance the queue names on the major street and the minor street. Basically in that type of situation, basically your car has However, you have to balance the major and the minor street. Uh, your minor street might be blocked by another major street approach. So basically, you have to uh, make some kind of uh, strategy how to deal with that type of situation. So we have come up with a simple strategy, and uh, we use the trajectory data to uh, validate those strategies. And uh, basically, we did the, the three scenarios. And I think for all our scenarios, we have uh, beat the existing traffic signal timing plan. 
And we also, I think we have also uh, generally speaking, we can beat the uh, traffic control system by around the 10 percent control is the actual central control module. So basically, that's first part of our work we are doing. The second part uh, is that uh, we are I'm sorry, can you elaborate on so um, how the connected vehicle technology are being used in this? Right. Yeah, basically what you can get from Basically, from the SPAC system, that what you can get is the vehicle trajectory in every second, or uh, well, 0 0.1 second. So, uh, whatever that your system will be, eventually the input to the traffic signal system is trajectory. So, we use, we didn't. Right now, the difficulty for us is that we don't have the connected vehicle information. And so what we did is that we used the existing uh, case data connection by Federal Highway, and we used their trajectory to try to validate our strategy. And uh, uh, that strategy basically is taking consideration about the vehicle trajectory. And uh, if we don't have the trajectory, then we this strategy will not be able to work. So we didn't do that as exactly as a, to get the information from the uh, from the vehicle trajectory. However, uh, right now what I have got is that at that time that was done by one year ago. And that time we have not finished the, uh, this part of the framework. Uh, this part of the framework we just finished, it, I think, uh, two months ago. So that work was done by one year ago. And with, with this one, then we should be able to do the work as we mentioned, uh, using that trajectory to validate the queue control strategies. And uh, at that time, we don't have any connected information. We don't have this program. Uh, we don't have this framework. And uh, so right now, what we are doing is we are trying to build the entire system based on the control, based on the uh, Strategies that we have. Well, I guess my question uh, is: um, I understand basically. So your baseline, we call baseline performance, is one that doesn't have, you know, any connected vehicle technology. Right. Just using the existing um, way of doing this. You know, right. Support. So, but even in the current system, yeah, I don't understand that part well. But even in the current system, what is signal controls, uh, they have also some algorithm. They probably already use some tree management uh, strategies, right? Even without connecting the vehicle. Do you have anything like that? Uh, as far as we know, uh, I don't think so. They're not doing any of these tree management things? They, they have the uh, algorithm to adjust the timing plan, but they don't have the specific tree management strategy. Okay. So the queue management is specifically developed for connected vehicles. Right, using the trajectory using data. Using trajectory data. Right. The the first the uh, adaptive control system, which is stock and the school system, and uh, which was uh, widely stored around the world for like the past twenty <coughs> years, and they have a different algorithm. First of all, they are trying to forecast. They're using the point detector to forecast the traffic. And uh, that part is uh, compared with the comprehensive information we can get from coming to the vehicle. 
that's just uh, not to be enough. And then we need to the focus uh, at another level of the error. So uh, basically, uh, the second part of our work is to try to build a trapped uh, progression model. The trapped progression model, we are trying to uh, base this model uh, have the connected weak information. However, we can uh, still, uh, our assumption that without a connected weak information, if we add ball point detectors, it can still work uh, in a degraded performance. So we, we try to develop a chart of progression model, which can um, propagate traffic from one intersection to another intersection. And with the connected uh, vehicle information, that propagation from one intersection to other intersection, you can somehow to correct it from, from the uh, information that you already detected uh, in real world. Uh, work. We're working on the two uh, directional propagation. By the way, one thing that the, the most effective traffic uh, control strategy on the uh, corridor wise is considered to be the traffic coordination and uh, you can basically there are uh, several uh, control elements that you want to do one is uh, cyclones another one is the offset and the third one is the uh, so that's a uh, traffic uh, terms that's a uh, uh, dynamically uh, mm -hmm. fine -tuned those algorithms according to the, first of all, we have to have a capital population model uh, which covers the traffic according to the vehicle trajectory from minor section to next intersection. Then when you have that population model and uh, with the connected vehicle information, then you have a much more better understand about the traffic next few seconds or next few minutes. With that information, then you can uh, dynamic and uh, to fine tune those cyclones in the offset according to the traffic information that you get. So that's the motivation or the philosophy behind what we are trying to do on um, this second part of the work. And uh, basically, this is uh, uh, something that uh, we uh, we established, and uh, uh, when you got the connected information, then we got a better trajectory. Uh, if we don't have the uh, connected information, we're well, hoping our program can still work with the uh, degraded forms. And so we're trying to accommodate both. And uh, uh, basically, we uh, finished this uh, on one directional progression. And uh, we have built the modules has interface with the S4. And uh, we trying to take the advantage about the work that we developed in the, the first part of the uh, framework. And we have uh, built a, a case study. However, we have not finished it, this project. So most likely we should be able to uh, finish this project by the end of this year. And uh, uh, this is uh, our case study in Mississippi. We have this case studies because we have very comprehensive traffic information from the previous project from this one. Like I said, we have done a scenario one, which is uh, an offline optimization. And we have done the scenario two, which is uh, traffic signal coordination with uh, forecast traffic traffic information from the, uh, uh, from the, uh, <coughs> tra or optimize the uh, offset and the split from the, uh, from the, uh, one of the other project which we, uh, we have to be talk about that, the integrated corridor management. So the scenario one basically is the, uh, is the state of the part, it's the state of uh, practice and uh, uh, we have hopes that the second adaptive one, although the adaptive algorithm is our in-house adaptive 
pathways in Paris outperform the uh, state of practice by 10%. You can see the state of practice one is already optimized the traffic signal uh, than the baseline information. The baseline traffic we have uh, for that this scenario is about a 10% of the delay reduction than the previous one. This uh, traffic signal timing device is by the city DOT uh, in the today's traffic. And so when we say optimized already, are they adaptive? No, but it's optimized. But the optimized optimization. optimization. Okay. The second scenario is uh, adaptive. Okay. And we have our own adaptive traffic, in which is uh, uh, which is uh, like a ten percent better than the uh, offline optimization. And so uh, we are working on the third scenario. And uh, I will be very glad if you email um, whatever report comes out about this project in Dr. Bo and Dr. Uh, Chow. So you expect another ten percent? We can expect to be another ten percent of the um, saving. When you say, you know, connect the vehicle to that, uh -huh. and then in, in your previous work, you right. use the uh, existing data uh -huh. uh, from DOT. Right. Now, exactly what you're looking for, is it like every vehicle, or, or you know, assume, you assume that they will send, send some information to the traffic signal controller? You know, so often, like what's the frequency? I mean, what what, what is the assumption? Exactly right. what you're looking for. You know, the assumption is that the case study is uh, we know the exact vehicle location in every second. Every second. Uh -huh. For the spec, they can get zero point one second, but we always work on one second the time interval. Uh, if we don't have any chance to adjust the timing plan every zero point five seconds, that's mm -hmm. not fit to. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the build trajectory data, right? From spec. Right. I believe spec and system is for the broadcasting. Uh, they so they have two way information. And also they're connecting. The right. They are also connect the. Uh, also, everything, if you look at their system architecture of that spec system. So, how about TCA? TCA is a simulation software. It's a simulation no, software about the BSM. BSM, right. Basic safe message. Yeah. So they simulate. So TCA is only for simulation. For simulation. Okay. They got the trajectory from simulation. Uh, okay. It's a kind of game. They got the trajectory information from simulation. They convert that information to the basic safe message. And for us, we don't need the basic safety method. We just need this trajectory. But the one part of that safety message is the trajectory. But that message is better than the trajectory because they have the turning, they have the turning information. They also have the vehicle ID information. They change the vehicle ID every five minutes. And you can say five minutes, you can get a Several intersections. Yeah. You, you can add in, so basically you can get a vehicle ID. Uh, you know, what I say uh, in the front is that uh, for the connected vehicle information you can implement, that gave us traffic engineers a lot of leverage, much, le much more leverage than we can get. And then you can remember P2's road system. Road, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, his system have a very good traffic uh, model trying to estimate vehicles turning percentage. Without a vehicle turning percentage, then his roads is just uh, like a, uh, like a, uh, the person with a blind eye who cannot see anything. If you don't have that good information about the turning percentage, however, with the connected vehicle information, we have vehicle ID, we can get a real time Turning percentage information, that information is 100% of the 400% uh, uh, truth. However, it, it's going to be uh, nothing to 100% because some of the vehicle, even every vehicle has a communication equipment, some of them might more function. So basically, we have very good estimation about the turning percentage. 
And in the past, the doctor control system is not work as uh, it did expected. As far as I can say, is one part of the adaptive control system. They have the part of the mathematical model to forecast the traffic in the future. And they have the difficult to get the uh, whole picture about the snapshot of the uh, current time. And without incomplete picture of the current time, how you can get a good estimation about the snapshot of the future. So those adaptive control systems is built on the good estimation about the future of a snapshot. And without the connected with the information, I missed the, at least the information in the current time step is a, a, a very accurate. So it's going to be a game changer if we can even get the OD information from the connected video because they won't change the ID in every five seconds. And with that ID, we can easily track where are those cars come and where are those cars go. And we can definitely we can probably build a model which can, you know, sometimes it can change the video. We can do a very good case about the OD in the future as well, even on the network wide. So that can give us a lot of research to do in the future. OD is a proper type of one that tells you more about how that OD is important to the transmission engineers and the traffic engineers. Without OD information, and uh, it's just that we can have the unlimited the, the, you know, uh, research capabilities if you have that real world, real type OD information to do a lot of things that we can never human that nowadays. So that's something that I think is going to continue. We can see more and more research and the probably is going to write up between the revolutionary change on the character of how the transportation is operated, how the transportation planning is doing nowadays. And the, nowadays, one of the uh, four steps is, is is trying to figure out where are the vehicles come out and where the vehicles go and how it's distributed on each of the major roads. And those information we can probably get from the connected vehicle. Well, one of the things that we're yes. struggling with, uh -huh. you know, of course I agree 100%, you know, this is why we're so excited uh -huh. about the connected vehicle right. technology because it offers so many right. prom promises and alternatives. Uh -huh. You know, the real challenge is really, you know, even if after you have this connected to your technology, uh -huh. you have collected all these information, what can you do with this information? I mean, how, yeah. how can you really optimize, you know, the thing? That's, right. that's the real challenge. Yeah, that's a real challenge. And uh, there was also a real challenge. We want those, uh, ans this question to be answered before the connected vehicle can be deployed. Uh, and uh, uh, most of the research cannot be validated and it cannot be done with the connected vehicle. So there is a chicken and egg issues too. And uh, right now we wanted to do the research, but we don't have any connected vehicle information, especially when we want the traffic signal control system. We need at least to have uh, 20, 50 percent of the vehicles to be connected to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then nowadays, uh, nowhere that it can yeah, I have worked with uh, 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 US DOT for past year and trying to ask them where we can get this data on which day. And nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we have to think about the other ways to generate the connected big information. Uh, in addition to the traffic simulation, traffic simulation is good and it can help us to develop the prototypes. However, without going to the field to actually test it, and you can understand that your prototype is, uh, is uh, working. So there are still some gaps, and uh, hopefully one day somebody can have a brilliant idea can bridge those gaps.
the case study that we are planning to do. Those are the uh, case study uh, that we have found scenario with two as well. And then those are the performance spatial dimensions that the, the percentage reduction about the performance uh, in the uh, first two strategies. So we have completed those two strategies. Um, we have completed those two scenarios and we are waiting until the end of this year to finish the entire uh, report. This is a very small body, it's like a, uh, 40 to 50 dollars. Basically, uh, US DOT will really have this uh, Amazon control algorithm. Uh, they ask the manufacturer, uh, they have asked the uh, controller manufacturer to build those algorithms within the uh, controller itself. However, US DOT cannot uh, convince all the manufacturers. That. So US did ask me, can you do that to do a hardware independent without going to the manufacturer? So what we did is that we used a small uh, computer Intel uh, or Raspberry Pi. And uh, the, because the computing function on this project were, it's good, much good enough. So what we did is that we uh, build the DCS algorithm and port to the small computer like this size, cost like a hundred hours. And uh, when you put inside a controller, you connect this one with a network. And uh, to the NTCIP, we did the same thing as a uh, controller manufacturer has done, which is, when you approach the intersection, if you have this plug in your controller, uh, under the night traffic condition, under the congested environment, the uh, DCS algorithm, the performance is not good. And we ported to this one, and we did the test. And here is the performance. We have uh, probably reading those numbers. Instead of reading those numbers, here is our conclusion. And we have a 60% rate and only reduction. We don't have the delay reduction. However, we have more than 20% of the number of stops reduction. Number of the stops have uh, closely associated with the energy consumption. So although there is no delay benefit, however, we do have the energy benefit. The simulation, how do you say <laughs> the red light uh, running uh, behavior? Or? Yeah, uh, that's uh, probably the red light running that's a good question. We, in simulation, all the cars are stopped. So we use the threshold deceleration rate, hmm. uh, which we define with 15 feet per second per second. And uh, if we use our deceleration rate, we still cannot stop the vehicles. Then we mark that vehicle as a uh, red line runner because uh, why we use our 15 uh, feet per second per second is because the Green Book uh, recommended that when we calculate the stop site distance. Green Book recommended 11.2. So our threshold is higher than Green Book threshold. So if we, but that can be configurable in our simulation. So in our simulation, we can simulate the cars can go to the red line. Oh, I'm, I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm totally lost actually in terms of okay. what's the, the, the intuition behind this? Why you're getting red light running reduction? Okay. How much? Um, right. The red light running reduction is that we cannot stop the car before the lights change to red. And when you go into the intersection, when the traffic lights turn to red, that's a red, we call that red light runner. So how does this technology, whatever this is helping you to reduce this? This one can help you to reduce this one is a... You're, you're, you're keeping the light green? Yes. Yes, we keep the light green. When, the, become, when the 
when the night is about it to be, when the, the actual signal controller works in this way. When you have the car, but in reality, how many of these bad drivers out there running red lights? No. No, 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 not bad driver. It's designed in that way. You huh? cannot pass the intersection until you run into the red light. What happened? Let me show you what happened. So basically, traffic signal controller works because we have a detector. And it, suppose this is your detector, and uh, you have your cars within some distance of the intersection. Mm -hmm. Within this intersection, we already has that detector. So the detector is uh, going to let that, let's see, the, other way around, so that the Nimadon, uh, this one is, when the traffic lights becomes uh, yellow, this car is going to decide, uh, are you going to stop or not to stop? At some distance, this car will not be able to stop, even though he wanted to stop. So he just go to the intersection. And at that point of the time, we wanted to stop the car or not to stop the car, and uh, that is called Nimadon. And uh, uh, if you wanted to go, then you are going to get a red light. So what would happen to that if he says upgrade? This was not defined by, uh, by Texas a &M. It's going to have an upstream detector. That detector can detect the cars, and we estimate we assume the car is going to travel at the speed detected mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. detector. If we know this car is going to in that Nima zone, then we just hold the that green light. We don't want it to change it to the yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's uh, affected by the driver's behavior, too. So, in, in this case, What's, what's the, in a sense, the threshold that means the green light eventually will turn into yellow into, into red? Right. Because you might have like a convoy of vehicles. That, you could go right. with green in the first place. So right. That, like I said, this uh, one will not work on the heavy traffic. Mm -hmm. It works uh, best at a rural high speed intersection. Mm -hmm. So this one probably, if you wanted to work with the city, we we'll work with the country with stability. Yeah. We'll make sure you find out the high speed one. It's probably it's going to fly in uh, in New York stability as well to deploy it back and to to make sure this one will be able to work. We can talk about that probably later on. Yeah, and, and I have a follow up question. So <coughs> in uh, low traffic condition, uh huh, you get the extension to to the green. Right. But at the same time, you have a grass right at the intersection. And the vehicle following sees the green light, continues and crosses. Is well, there a way to prevent this somehow? Well, you continuously, this detector continuously monitor the cars. If you think the next car is going to follow the same track, so the Nimadon is continuing to hold the green. So the car won't get the yellow light and then the red light until the Inima zone is clear. Yeah. Right. It's continued to hold the green until the entire Inima zone is clear. However, like I said, if you have uh, too many cars, the Inima zone is always have the cars, then you still have to be maxed out. The maximum green is still going to work. Or you can have an option. In our algorithm, we change the excess and an algorithm a bit, you can specify another maximum green you want the traffic engine you want, but it can surpass the previous maximum green. So it's up to you as a traffic engineer decide how long 
what is the maximum harm you want in the cold in that type of situation. But you can still reduce the proximity of the cars to be trapped in that the uh, in Amazon. Okay. Um, this is a quick uh, turning around for the uh, federal highway, it's like a 100 k so we just did that in half a year. Basically, what this one is in, in freeway working areas, and we all have experience when the traffic on the main line and on the right behind, you have a hard time to get into the freeway. And if that continues back up, you might drop the intersection too from the right. So what we wanted to do is that we wanted to create more gaps to allow the car to run more gaps. So what, in, what the people have done in that is, uh, in the past, is uh, proposed a, a very close speed limit. When there, if the speed limit is uh, 60 miles, and uh, this section, I drop the speed limit to 40 miles per hour, we have the variable message sign, and we detect that all these freeways congested, and we detect the rack is congested too. And we just drop the speed limit on this section, and this is the previous research. So what we propose is that we just drop this one in a few seconds, then that 40 come back to 60. And like uh, we drop in a delta time, that is usually five seconds in our study. Then we we'll allow the cars back to a normal street uh, speed. So that turbulence to the freeway movement of the cars could make a much better gap for the vehicles to be able to move. And uh, this has an uh, advantage over the previous version of the variable speed limit. In the variable speed, uh, speed limit, the study has indicated you have more cars, definitely not speed to create more cars speed to the freeway. However, the freeway throughput and the delay is going to outweigh the benefit you can get the cars inside the freeway. So with the new proposed our cycle-based model, and we got every uh, performance is better. We got better throughput, we got better delay on the run. And a combination of the delay on the freeway and the run is going to be better than without this. How do you cycle then? Second is we, one second, we reduce this spin in five seconds. So well, that's causing confusion, design. right, for the drivers. For the yeah, drivers, so you can increase speed and lower the speed. No, and the you don't have, for the independent drivers, he either to go into decrease the speed or he keep the same speed. For the, for the connection of the driver, some of the driver is going to decrease the speed. Some of the driver never feel the difference because the speed limit is the same as what he has seen or she has seen in the previous sections. So if you look at this, it might co cost, uh, it's, an, it's not perfect system, like you said, probably it's going to cause a co uh, confusion for some of the drivers too. So basically, we have a uh, measure, this is how that one can work. So we basically have an upstream detector measure the track the flow rate, and then we have uh, each of the cycle, we have uh, uh, some of the vehicles, some of the time we wanted to actuate the speed in the control. And uh, then we have to drop the speed limit. And then we restore to the limit once it's past this uh, merging areas. But it's not, uh, we got uh, some, some people are criticized this one is that they, uh, like uh, you said, uh, how you can reduce the speed, the increase speed, that can, that, that's probably not good and it's harder to implement. Uh, my argument is that the variable speed limit has been tested and implemented. The difference between the variable speed limit and the cycle-based speed limit is that we just drop the speed 
We does not drop the speed all the time. We just drop the speed limit a fraction of the time. Thus can still create the same turbulence to the traffic control. However, the disruption to the traffic is much lower and uh, it won't affect the throughput. At least we, uh, we have a uh, full this in the simulation. So the next step we are trying to persuade the US DOT is to do a field test in Mississippi. And this simulation proof, this is to be good. But like I said, many of the traffic control strategy, you won't, you won't, you won't say it's successful until you did a field test. And this one is good for the connected vehicle in the future as well. For the connected vehicle, we can beam up to the individual vehicles, you speed up. You keep your speed limit. Right, so that's a, that's a talk I'm still continue with the US DOD and to continue this, fund this project, because uh, at least right now it has the potential to be much better than other uh, variable speed limit. And then, what is the will work if you increase the cycle? Every three minutes. Right, that's another, yeah, that's another research topic is uh, to optimize the cycle length and uh, to optimize yeah. this uh, speed reduction area. But this is just, like uh, they just gave us uh, half year uh, limited money and uh, what we are hoping is that uh, with this uh, results they can be convinced that uh, we can continue this research so this is the kind of safe research but so so the idea is to drop the speed limit uh -huh. so that more vehicles will enter yeah more vehicles will be able to merge into the front right. but by dropping the speed limit that might sort of create some sort of a stop wave or something uh -huh. and uh, crack and the cables are going to decrease and you are going to decrease the gap between the vehicles so it's actually it might be more difficult for the vehicles to enter oh, okay. once you drop the speed and then you increase it then the gaps are going to start to increase Not so true. maybe the, the timing for the entrance would make more sense to be at the point that the speed decreases as opposed to the uh, time not the really here is what happened to the fast speed limit. You have this section, you have your normal speed. Oh well, so if we at this point, you have the speed drop size already. So the vehicle is going to see the speed drop size. And at this point, somewhere before this merging area, this speed limit come up to the, come up to the uh, normal speed limit. So there's only a short Lens. Usually that is like 800 speed limit drop. And after 800 minutes, speed limit back to normal. And the field test and the simulation has indicated more gaps. So the only change in our approach is a change that is to, the, to allow the speed to drop all the time to allow the speed drop to a small percentage of it. So our, basically, we just the improvement, made an improvement to the already field test to the variable speed limit size. So in your case, uh, according to the field test and to the simulation stuff, won't happen. No problem. And we also have the analytic model too, trying to capture that speed change on the freeway and then trying to capture the speed change on the uh, ramps. So we combine those two uh, speed changes, then we can create a delay model. And we submitted this to the TRT paper. I'm not sure it's going to be accepted by the way committed. That's another story. But I think it's still something that it's worth to try. Because the field test won't cost US DOT a lot of money. And if you can really get, we did a simulation study, and we uh, use that, uh, we, we interface the algorithm with the F4 we created it before. And then this is the outcome from the study. Basically, look at those numbers. I have a different version. This is my old this is the previous question. The conclusion that 
we can get at least the five to ten percent delay reduction and five percent full foot increase in the combined freeway and the run. Freeway speed is going to freeway delay is going to increase slightly. However, run delay is going to be reduced significantly. And the freeway throughput won't change. Uh, and actually increase the five percent because the car more power sketch. Uh there we have a lot of time to get wrap up with right. This is a uh, this is a integrated corridor management project it's online. If you look at this one on TRD website and they have a comprehensive report, so I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, and this is a case study we did in Mississippi, the I-55. And this is a, uh, in one of my graduate courses. And the uh, graduate student, two PhD student, the model of the basic. And we add the basic model with the airport and the PJ comparison. Um, that's, uh, that's everything about the I also have more slides about the earthquake project that we did in Mississippi, and I also have a slide about the uh, district building and the uh, cloud computing truck simulator. However, I think we today we are running out of time. I'm going to send all the slides back to the studio and to post it and to send it to all the attendees. Now we can mix it. And I like to, uh, you know, to have a more discussion with uh, uh, the audience over here and the doctor. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Uh, for Dr. Zhang?